All right, guys, happy Thursday. This is our more cardio focused day and we are starting off with a 30 minute EMOMS. We don't often do EMOMS this long, so normally they're 20, so we have 10 extra minutes, all right? Looking at this, it'll look pretty basic when you look at the numbers, right? Particularly for the more advanced athletes. So one way to think about this is to try to use the clock, see how long does it take you to do these reps each round and try to get that round after round repetitively, okay? So it's gonna be each minute rotate through a different movement. Minute one will be 15 box jump overs. Minute two will be 20 air squats. Minute three will be 50 double unders. Minute four will be 20 push-ups, all right? So uh, 15 box jump overs. The faster athletes will go laterally back and forth really quick or you can go straight forward, which takes a little bit more time to turn around. So you don't have to stand up on top of the box, right? Find a way that you can move through quickly. Remember, the quicker you get them done, the more rest you get for the next minute. So find a nice rhythm, forward and back for 15 reps. The faster way is gonna be lateral, right? Because you don't have to turn around, but a little bit harder to jump side to side, okay? So 15 reps there, rest the remainder of the minute. Next one's gonna be 20 air squats. Again, pretty straightforward. Get a good deep squat, stand up all the way, every single rep. If this is easy for you, take a look at the clock and try to keep your pace up round after round. From there, minute three will be 50 double unders. 50 double unders is like the most standard rep count we do for double unders. The goal is to be able to do these unbroken. Okay, so um, choose a number you can get through relatively, so like it shouldn't be really longer than 40 seconds, you should have a little rest before the next minute, so maybe just do as many double unders as you can in 40 seconds, or choose a number you're more comfortable with, like half the reps, but again, focusing on nice tall chest, okay? Notice I'm trying to use my wrists, not big arm motion. So if you're still learning, put some singles in between, nice slow singles, and try to Get some doubles in there, have some, have some good moments, uh, and just do your best there. After that, last one's 20 push-ups. So again, uh, for those that are good at push-ups, these will feel easy, bang them out, see if you can do them unbroken. But the main thing is good standard. So nice line from the shoulder through the hip to the ankle, all the way down, all the way up. I say it's not just chest touching, but think your chest touches and your thighs also graze the ground, okay? Let's just show that everything's moving together because we'll see some people keep their hips high, okay? and they're not moving their whole body. We wanna get everything to move together. Good lockout, good range of motion for 20 reps. A way you can scale this is doing an elevated push-up. So the higher your hands go, the easier this is gonna be. But again, choose something that feels good. So you can do a set of 20 right off the bat. You can also do um, band around your hips. So if I put a band around my hips, this will help support me to do good quality push-ups, all right? After those 20 reps, you're gonna get another full minute of rest before repeating that whole thing for 30 minutes straight. So that is part one of the day. When we're done there, we'll rest as needed, and then we're gonna finish off the day with one of two core options. Um, the first is gonna be 100 V-ups for time, okay? So a V-up done properly is really challenging. So I'm gonna start in hollow. Main thing, we never wanna lose that that arch in our low back. So I don't wanna collapse here like this and do V-ups and collapse down. You'll start to feel a little tug in your low back. That's our psoas, that hip flexor. So try to keep your legs straight and really snap up. Okay, be hard on yourself. This is not the workout. Uh, we're looking for quality here. And just to get better at our core, get our hip flexor stronger, All right? So a way to scale this, of course, you can do less reps or you can go to a tuck up, same rule. Okay, at the top, you should be only on your butt. Nice controlled movement, never collapsing out here, okay? Um, also, we're gonna go over to the GHGs and talk about how we can do six, depending on your experience level, uh, 60, 75 GHGs as an alternative as well. All right, guys, so we're gonna talk about the GHG. If you know, I love this thing. It's great for building um, midline strength. And we'll often see when this is in a workout, like today, only do if you have experience, all right? So today's a great day to gain some of that experience. Feel free to mix and match some reps here with working on your V-ups or tuck-ups, but I just wanna go through how this works. There's, there's one big um, technique issue and challenge that people have with this, which is using your hip flexor, using your, your quad to help 
drive the movement. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when you set up, okay, remember you can adjust how far this is. You want your butt to be on the downward slope. And when you initiate the movement, your knees are bent, okay? As I sit up, my legs are gonna straighten. So on the way down, my legs look like this. As I sit up, I, I lock my knees. Oh, people think about this in different ways. Some people think about kicking the metal, rather right? trying to reach. Some people think about driving their knees down. But whatever it is, that's the movement, the flexing of your quad as you sit up that drives the movement. So to start, do hands across the chest, come just past parallel, and feel the timing of locking the knees to help drive. It's a timing thing as you sit up, okay? You don't want to keep the knees bent the whole time, and you don't want them straight the whole time. You'll start to feel, again, that thing I talked about on the floor, the same muscle. You'll start to feel your low back, a little burning feeling there, okay? So as you get better, you can increase range of motion, okay? Hardest is going to be arms overhead because this makes it heavier, okay? But again, watch my knees as I sit up, flex my quads. So when you do this right, it's kind of interesting. You'll feel your legs will start to burn. You don't feel your core as much until a day or two later. But again, really potent, really good exercise for making your midline stronger. Play around with it. Have fun. See you tomorrow.